we're going to be looking at the neuromuscular junction. This is the area in which a nerve cell interacts with a muscle cell. And what happens is that the nerve cell or neuron is going to be sending a stimulus that's going to cause the skeletal muscle cell to contract. One nerve cell or motor neuron can actually stimulate one to hundreds of different skeletal muscle cells within a skeletal muscle. It all depends on what the need is and how strong the impulse is um, and, and what the body needs to do. Um, but every single neuron has one process which is called an axon and the axon is what is the sending process. It sends the electrical signal or the impulse down to the end um, and what happens is that the axon branches in something, into something called the axon terminal, which are a bunch of little feet-looking things, which are right here, as you can see. Okay, And these axon terminals, um, something interesting about nerve cells is that even though they interact with different cells, they actually don't touch them. They get really, really, really close. And if you can see this right here, all right, this is the skeletal muscle cell right here and this is the nerve cell and they are going to be interacting with each other this is the nerve cell right here that's going to be giving the um, signal or sending um, the message or the action potential to this skeletal muscle cell but they don't touch and this space this area right here is called the synapse or the synaptic cleft and if people have studied uh, electricity before. We know that in order for electricity to work there has to be a closed circuit. Um, how can there be a closed circuit when these two things are not touching if there's an electrical signal coming down here? Well what happens is that once the electrical signal gets down to the end of the nerve cell, to the axon terminal, um, it stimulates these gates right here which are voltage gated calcium channels. It's because of the electrical current change that's going on within the nerve cell itself. And what happens is calcium ions rush into the cell and they stimulate these secretory vesicles to be exocytosed across the plasma membrane out into the synaptic cleft. What gets um, sent out of the cell are these little chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are going to be transmitting the nerve signal or the nerve process to the postsynaptic cell. Postsynaptic cell means it's the cell that is after this little space right here. In the case of skeletal muscle, the, neuro, um, the neurotransmitter that we're going to be dealing with is acetylcholine, which we can also call ACH. Okay? Acetylcholine is going to be um, secreted at the axon terminal due to the um, action potential coming down the axon causing these this um, because of the electrical current change again these voltage gated calcium channels are going to open calcium is going to rush into the um, axon terminal it's going to stimulate the secretory vesicles to be exocytosed out of the cell releasing acetylcholine acetylcholine is going to move down their concentration gradient across the synaptic cleft and they're to bind on to the um, ligand gated channels all right on the motor end plate which is the area of the skeletal muscle cell that interacts with um, a nerve cell so acetylcholine has moved across the synaptic cleft and it binds on to a different type of gate up here we had a voltage gated calcium channel and that's opened up because of an electrical current change that's going on with that within inside the plasma membrane of the nerve cell but down here we have acetylcholine binding to a neurotransmitter gated channel which can also be called a ligand gated channel and what happens is that when acetylcholine binds onto these gates, it changes the conformation and it allows sodium ions to now rush into the cell at a really, really fast rate. And at a normal resting state or a non-contracting state, the inside of the skeletal muscle cell, the, the charge, the electrical charge is going to be negative. 
and the outside is going to be positive. And this is called being polarized. But when this ligand, acetylcholine, comes over and binds on to this area right here, it opens up these um, sodium channels and sodium floods into the cell. So sodium is flooding into the cell, flooding into the cell. Right, it's accumulating inside of the cell, and potassium is coming out of the cell. But what happen what's happening is that there's so much more sodium coming in the cell than there is potassium going out of the cell that we end up with this buildup of positive charge inside of the cell. And so the skeletal muscle cell now becomes more positive on the inside and positive on the outside. And this state right here is known as being depolarized. Now this event only happens right here at the neuromuscular junction until it reaches a certain threshold potential. Once it reaches that certain threshold potential, then it's an all or none response and an action potential is fired. And this event that's going on right here is going to happen throughout the entire plasma membrane or sarcolemma of the skeletal muscle cell. So once the threshold potential is reached, and that means that the inside of the cell's electrical current is going to go from negative 70 millivolts, and enough sodium is going to accumulate on the inside of the cell to raise it to positive 30 millivolts, then an action potential is going to occur. And this event that was going on right here, the sodium rushing in and causing this localized change in electrical current right here, is going to spread, like I said, throughout the entire plasma membrane. And these are ligand-gated channels right here. They were opened up because acetylcholine bonded onto them. But what happens is that once we reach this positive 30 millivolts, and action potential fires. And, sorry, there we go. And action potential fires. And this electrical change turns on other voltage gated channels. So now sodium is going to rush in to the cell everywhere. So as the action potential is spreading throughout the sarcolemma, or the plasma membrane of the skeletal muscle cell, this electrical current comes down the plasma membrane, and it goes down these specializations of the plasma membrane, which are called T-tubules. The T-tubules bring this electrical current change down into the sarcoplasm, and they end up stimulating other voltage um, gates located in this structure right here, which is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, because of the electrical change, um, these gates get opened at their, what's called their terminal cisternae, which are right here, and they end up releasing calcium ions into the sarcoplasm. Calcium ions are the final thing that are needed for skeletal muscles to contract, because what happens is that we have ATP that's being generated continuously um, via the Krebs cycle, and ATP is going over and attaching onto the myosin, um, myofilament and uh, energizing the process um, to cause sliding muscle filament theory. However, calcium is needed because it actually unblocks the myosin binding site on um, the actin molecule.